Hi everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. My name is Jim. So in this video, we're actually gonna get back to the basics and we're gonna do natural inlay. Now, Jim D, who is a friend of the channel, sent along this crushed pink coral and we are gonna do this inlay in the rim of the bowl to see what it looks like in walnut and maple. So we're gonna do the inlay in the rim on both of these and there should be a good comparison and it should be a neat, neat uh, it should give us a good idea as to what they look in light and dark woods. So that's kind of why I'm going in that direction. Along with that, now I still have a bunch of cans of the sellable finished by General Finishes, but once that runs out, I'm gonna be looking for a non-toxic food safe finish again. And if you remember a little while back, I picked up, camera to focus on that, this Easy Do. Sorry about the lights. It's so gray here today that it's gotta be, I gotta use them. And um, this is non-toxic when it's cured. So um, maybe this will be the, the go-to finish in the future. It's a wipe on poly, so I don't know. I don't know how that's all gonna go, but we're gonna figure it out. Anyway, that's this video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. And of course, that thumbs up helps with the analytics. And if you can leave a comment down below, that really helps the channel as well. It helps beat the algorithm. So if you can do that, please leave a comment down below. And of course, that's where we're gonna get the next winner of the 35,000 subscriber giveaway bowl. We're gonna pick from the comments. All right, so I don't know if you noticed or not, but those have been trimmed up a little bit. I'll explain why I do that in a voiceover. I don't always do it on a lot of things, but I'll explain that in a voiceover. So, but we need to trim them up, sand them, and get them ready for the inlay. So let's do that. So a couple of things, um, I'm going to apologize. You're going to see some, some marks on the screen. And what that was, was there was dirt trapped between the lens and the camera itself. Uh, so when I was looking at the camera cleaning it off, it looked fine to me. And it wasn't until I started editing the footage that I noticed that some, some of the shots you're going to see kind of dirt. So I apologize for that. As far as the bowls and trim them. So when I was in full production, I could finish probably about 25 finished inlaid bowls a week. That was kind of my typical production. And of course they take a lot longer to do than say normal wood turnings. So um, doing the inlaid bowls kind of kills your production. If I was just doing normal bowls, I could maybe do 40 a week. I don't know, maybe even more without the inlays. Um, so I would bring them all in, put the waste blocks on them, trim them up and let them sit on the shelf until I got to them. And, and when I mean trim them up, I would just trim them up to make them round, not necessarily to the finished uh, thickness. So that's, that's kind of what I would do. And that would do a couple things that would take some of the tension out of the wood so that when it goes into my drying shed, where there's, or sorry, into my drying room where there's heat, they tend to warp less. And so that's why I would do that. So if you're going to, do a bunch of bowls. I really recommend using this method. Um, it worked quite well for me. You will see a bit of movement in the maple one afterwards. But other than that, the, the walnut pretty much stays true the whole time. But anyway, that's why I do that. So I thought that I would share that with you guys. And if you want to um, try it, I would recommend it. So since we're doing an inlay in the rim of this, I want to seal up the inside of the groove so that the um, the resin doesn't actually weep through the bowl and stain the outside of the bowl. Um, that worked great. Um, you'll see that I do end up getting some resin runs, which become a pain, but um, that seals up the inside of that groove really well and none of it wick through. I just shot a little bit of footage here of the maple one being trimmed up and the groove being um, cut. And I did the same procedure with the medium CA glue as well with that. Sealed up the inside of that groove so that the resin didn't wick through.
All right, so for this project, we're actually going to be using the Pro Series from Design Epoxy. All right, so I'm going to put in a couple of bags of this pink coral. Then we'll see where we're at. If you're wondering why I use the medium CA instead of uh, the resin, it's because it just allowed me to uh, do the inlay the same day that I turned the bowl. All right, so I'm taking a bit of a risk here. There's no finish. I don't really know how that finish is going to react with this. So we're just going to have to hope that we don't get any resin staining, and that didn't take very long, did it? Right on the end grain, too. I think it'd be all right. All right, so that's the first one. We are going to put these in the pressure pot. I do kind of find, I do kind of see a spot here where it looks like it's more resin than actual the inlay. What I'm going to do is take the dry material and fill up any areas that I think it needs it. I might go right around it, the whole thing. And that should embed itself into the resin, or at least I'm hoping it will, because this is about the inlay and not about clear resin. So. <laughs> there you can see it's already starting to go down into it, so that's good. Try and give it an even coat. There, that should all kind of wick down in there. That's my thought process anyway. And uh, yeah, I got the luxury of having two pressure pots. So I'm going to put both of these pieces in the pressure pot. Here's the walnut. That one seemed to go a little smoother. I'm going to do the same thing with it. I'm just going to take this pink coral and just kind of dust the surface with it. And that way it should sink down and it should look relatively uniform in theory. All right, let's get these in the first box. All right, so we're out of the pressure pot and I want to show you this. So you've got kind of a clear resin on the top that's probably about a sixteenth of an inch and then down below that is the is the pink coral. Um, <laughs> got a couple of glue runs, so hopefully that's not going to be a big deal. So there's that one. And that one's actually better than, or actually, yeah, that's the worst one actually. This one here is a little better. Again, I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up or not. I'm trying to show that shadow line in there. Um, something to be careful when you're doing these. Make sure that uh, you have enough of the material in there with your resin. Uh, if I hadn't added that extra material in kind of an off camera, I just took the, the tongue depressor and kind of pushed down on it and kind of mixed it all up to make sure that it was all kind of flat-ish. Um, so anyway, as you can see, we got some glue runs again, or I should say resin runs, right on the end grain too, where you don't want it. We'll see how that 
comes out. All right, enough talking, let's get this on the lathe. So here I'm using the Hercules to trim back the uh, the resin here, and it's um, it's a good thing. I, I don't know if you can do this with a gouge or not. It's uh, that pink coral is pretty hard stuff. So you can see the resin's really clear, and then eventually it turns red, and of course that means you're down into the into the real inlay and not the resin. And when I initially sand back these inlays, I like to use the six inch random orbital sander with 60 grit paper on it. Um, again, you can get all this stuff from sandpaper.ca. And there I use my air sander. I don't usually use it too much on the very top, but here I thought it was a good choice. And now I'm trying to get rid of these glue runs, or sorry, these resin runs. And, um, you know, for the most part, they disappear. They're not too distractive. Um, anyway, you'll see later on that I'm just not real happy with it and I go back and fix them. <laughs> All right, so this is what we're going to use. And um, again, I've never used this before. John, is that Booze or Bose and Company? Easy do. Um, anyway, it says to wipe it on. Let it sit for a minute or two and then wipe it off and then recoat the next day. So, you know, um, that's what it looks like. Oof, man, it does not have a pleasant smell, I'll tell you that. But I don't really care. If it works, that's what matters. So I have not been able to get rid of the staining from the resin. You see it there? There's two lines. We'll zoom in for you. Yeah, so hopefully the finish will kind of uh, mask that. Uh, you know, it's just the risk you take when you don't seal up wood. Now, there was a comment the other day about me using rags on the lathe, and I understand that it's important that, you know, working with rags around spinning objects can be bad okay so whenever i'm holding a rag i don't have it wrapped around my fingers or anything like that usually it's just held with you know my thumb and these two fingers right here so you know if it gets pulled out of my hand it's going to get pulled out of my hand it's not going to damage my hand you can't put on some of these finishes with paper towel because it breaks down and then you get lint and crap all through your finishes. So sometimes you have to use rags. <laughs> it just kind of looks like a really thick Osmo almost. Oh man. To be quite honest, a uh, finish could smell like a, an old cattle burn for all I care. Uh, the, the main thing is uh, having it work. Um, it definitely has a pungent odor to it, and I can't even really explain what, <laughs> what it smells like. So, yeah, you may have to get a can yourself and smell it yourself. All right, I'll let that sit for a couple minutes. I'll bring you back. All right, time's up. Well, it's a very, uh, it's a very matte finish. So far, anyway. We'll see what the next coat or two does to it. It says to apply a minimum of two coats and I just don't know if this is going to work for us because uh, we'll have to see. Put this off and we can have a look at it. One thing that it certainly does, and there you can see a couple spots where the resin staining, staining is there. And same thing there. Uh, the solid bowl finish is a more amber finish. And I think that it typically would maybe cover this up better. Uh, I didn't actually point this out to you guys, but this bowl actually has some bird's eye in it. 
bird's eye maple. See them? Lights may be a little too bright. Try to turn that off. There, see them? Um, anyway, we'll see what it is tomorrow. Anyway, it's the end of the day. I gotta, I'll have to do the walnut one tomorrow because I am beat. See you tomorrow. I had to cut deeper into the inlay on this one. Uh, it's important that you get right down to the inlay material. If you don't, there'll be color variations uh, after you get done sanding and put your finish on. Um, so that's why it's important to make sure you've got enough material in there if you're going to, you know, do inlays like this. And just trying different angles, trying to get a clean cut. And the, the sanding process was identical to, um, to the uh, maple one. All right, so I was able to get rid of the, all of the resin staining on this walnut bowl. I don't know if it's, it must be because the walnut's a lot harder and it didn't absorb it. I did go back to 180 and I don't know, I might throw the maple one back on here and do that to see if I can get rid of those uh, resin runs that you see in there. Uh, but anyway, this was nice and clean, so that's great. All right. Easy do, again. You might have noticed that I'm putting on a lot heavier than I did the maple one. The maple one just looks like it doesn't have any finish on it at all, really. So that's why I'm putting this on a little heavier to see if... Um, we can make it seem like it's got a finish on it anyway. It certainly looks a lot better on this, um, this black walnut, that's for sure. There, we'll give that a minute and then we'll wipe it off and have a look at it. All right, well, uh, it looks a lot better on the walnut, for sure. Um, that pink coral, camera focus here, come on now, there it is. Oh. Anyway, uh, it is a lot better on this bowl here. So, you know, I think I am gonna put the maple one back on there. Do more aggressive sanding, try and get rid of that uh, resin staining. And then we'll see you guys tomorrow for the next coat. Alright, so I wasn't going to bring you back for this, but I guess I should. Uh, for the most part, I got rid of pretty much all the resin staining. Just a little tiny little bit here and there. I. Uh, You'll know because you're watching this video, but I don't think it's something you would pick up on if, you know, you just seen this bowl. All right, so let's put the second, or sorry, this technically would be the second coat, but I sanded it all off, so we're back to the first coat. And I'm going to put it on a lot heavier this time like I did with the walnut one. The heavier coat seems to be uh, a lot better, that's for sure. By the way, I sent this back to 120, actually, and then up to 320. And yes, if I would have had a coat of finish on this, I wouldn't have to deal with any of that resin staining, I don't believe. Even even this stuff. I know if the uh, wood bowl finish or solid bowl finish was on here, 
we certainly wouldn't have had any resin, resin staining at all. Uh, I'm assuming that this stuff would be this, in the same category as well. Just enough to seal the pores up. Same as before, I'll just give that a minute and we'll buff it off. Right, that should be long enough. Yeah, putting that on heavier certainly seems to be the key, for the first coat anyway. Uh, you can actually tell that there's actually a finish on here now, so that's, that's good. Um, yeah. Now we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Alright, so we're getting ready to put our second coat on. Uh, it's the next day. It's actually two days later. Um, you know, there's, it's hard to tell if there's really anything on here. Uh, after it's dried. So it says to use a fine sandpaper between coats, but I'm not going to do that. I think I'll just stick with the steel wool. Um, I'm going to use the really, really fine stuff that you can get from Lee Valley, the 4 steel wool, but it's actually finer than 4 steel wool, I find anyway. So anyway, we'll put the steel wool to it, clean it off, we'll put on the next coat, and then uh, we'll see how it looks. I have used uh, varnishes in the past, wipe on varnishes, where they say to just keep rubbing with the rag until the rag glides across it. So I might try that as well. So anyway, let's see what we can get here. Second coat of easy do. So as you can see, the second coat actually um, really helped the um, the appearance of this bowl. And, you know, it's no different than any other finishes. The more coats you put on, typically the better it will look. Now we'll just give that a minute and then we'll try some buffing with a rag. All right, that's been a minute. Let's try some buffing. I may put some on the rag as well when I'm doing it. I don't know. Let's Let's see. So I put a fair bit on there, and that's really all that came off. So it's still on there. Uh, it does say that it leaves like a satin finish. So I want to actually put some on the rag and then do some buffing with it to see if we can uh, start building up the finish. The term I should have used there, bring out the shine, not the finish. We're looking for more shine. Well, that's, you know, that's brought up the shine. I'm not going to deny that. I don't know, I'll do the back side and then um, get it off and have a look at it. All right, uh, there's definitely a finish on there. There's no doubt about it. And it actually doesn't look too bad. Um, little spot up there. And, you know, it's kind of very similar to when I was doing with the Osmo with the drill and it would leave little spots around. But, you know, I'm pretty impressed. After the first coat, I wasn't so sure. Uh, it isn't a film finish. You can still see the pores of the wood. So, you know, it certainly doesn't take away uh, the beauty of the wood. Uh, I know some film finish, film finishes will leave quite a heavy coat on the on the surface of the wood and sometimes that's not overly attractive. So anyway, uh, I think tomorrow I'll do it the same way again on this. And for the maple one, I'm going to 4 old steel wool it just like I did this one, but I'm just going to put a normal coat on it and then kind of wipe it off like I did with the first coat. And maybe it'd be nicer if, if the coat kind of builds before we do the third coat. So that's kind of my thought process. Anyway, let me know what you think. Well, there you go. It's not as shiny as the walnut is, that's for sure. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I can see all kinds of streaks in it, which, you know, I do not like. Will they be there in the morning? Uh, I assume so. 
Anyway, day three coming up. All right, we're getting ready to put the third coat on. Uh, it's a very matte finish, that's for sure, and I don't know if it's going to get much better than this. So, you know, I, I find that the friction polish worked better uh, on this than on the other bowl. So, you know, I think that I'm going to stick with that kind of that friction method. And all I'm going to do is take this white scotch bright pad, which really doesn't um, take any material off really at all. It's very, very fine. It's actually finer than four roll steel wool. Just to knock down any of these shiny spots that are in here. And then we'll go on with the other finish. And then, you know, it's early enough in the day, I could probably do another one. And then that's it. We're going to call it at that. So that's what I'm up to. <laughs> you know, before I, uh, before I put this next coat on, people get wrapped up in uh, food safe finishes. Now this is right on, right on the back of the can here, okay? Flammable liquid and vapor may cause genetic defects, may cause cancer, causes damage to organs through prolonged and repeated exposure, causes serious eye irritation. Safe for food contact, right here. So, you know, people get wrapped up in food safe finishes, um, <laughs> but you know, really, I don't know what to say, you know, like it's, I, I would have no issues putting a Danish oil, like a Watco Danish oil on these bowls because it's a clear finish and essentially when all clear finishes are fully cured, they're food safe. Anyway, that's just a little food for thought. Uh, I thought that I would just kind of, I know that's a little hard to see there. It's right there. Anyway. And of course, this more or less uh, refers to the person that is using it, that's using it on a daily basis. All right, so we're gonna go with another heavy, heavy application of this. And you can see, like, I'm not sparing it. I'm using a lot of this. Like it says, we'll give that a minute or two, and then we'll buff it. All right, so I've got a little bit on the rag here, and let's just try and buff this and see what we get. Let's see if we can improve the shine on it any. Again, I'm just holding this rag with my thumb and two fingers here. So if it gets pulled out of my hand, it's not gonna damage me. I should also mention that the speed is 620. That's a thousand. So I'm reasonably happy with that. I'll do the back side and then I'll get it off and we'll have a look at it. Anybody that's used friction polishes know you get this build up on your rag and that's actually where your shine comes from. Well, that's what I'm doing with this product too. All right, so I, I don't know. Is it better than the last time? <laughs> it's a little hard to tell. Um, maybe I'll be able to tell when the footage is kind of all back to back. Anyway, um, what do you think? I'm undecided. It's certainly not as shiny as I like, even though it looks like it in there. It's in person, it's probably a little more matte than that. Anyway, that's what it looks like. We'll, uh, we'll get the maple wine on. And remember, we just, we didn't do any buffing on it yesterday. So I'm hoping that there's more of a, a coat of finish on there. And, but I'm gonna buff that the maple one the same way as this one. Anyway, I won't show any of that. I'll just show you what it looks like after I get done. I wasn't gonna show this, but I just used white diamond the next day after the finish had dried, just to give it a little shine. All right, there's the maple. It's not bad. Um, 
you know, this would probably be great for most people. There's our bird's eyes. The end grain is really where you're going to notice if it's effective or not, because of course the end grain will absorb more finish. Uh, using it like a friction polish on the lathe seems to be the way to go with it. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going to call it there. I'm just going to finish the foot on these. And um, you know what, I'm not even going to bother showing it, because I show it every week. And uh, anyway, I'll just bring you in here at the end. And we'll do a last little talk about, first of all, the pink coral that looks kind of red <laughs> and uh, the finish itself. All right, so before we carry on with the video, I thought I would show this. I've got four fractal burnt maple bowls and three birch ones. Uh, maples actually burned pretty nicely this time. Uh, I don't know what the issue is with the boards, but... These ones burned actually quite nice. Really nice detail in these. Uh, this one has a soapstone inlay in it. And it's actually got bird's eye in it as well. And if you're wondering what a, what a bird's eye looks like in a bowl, it's elongated. That's what they look like. Um, again, that's another maple one. This uh, birch one actually has a hole <laughs> right through it. And it just so happens that it lined up on the outside of the bowl. There it is there. Can't really see it. Anyway, two of the burns lined up, so it's got a small little hole in it. I mean, you can't use these for liquids or anything like that anyway, so that's just fine. Anyway, I'll flip these over. Uh, that way you can see the stock number and the price. All right, so here they are flipped over. Uh, they haven't moved position, they're in the same spot. 240, 220, there's their stock number if you're curious. 280, 116. It's actually got another inlay on the, on the outside of it as well. So it was more work, so that's why it's more money. It's actually the biggest bowl one, biggest bowl here. These are a little more reasonably priced. And there's the one with the hole in it. Anyway, let me know if you're interested in these. Uh, we can still get these out for Christmas. All right, let's, um, let's finish this video up here. All right, so I was, I was kind of curious why that inlay was listed as pink and it looks so red. So I went back and I looked at some of the other inlay materials that Jim D sent along. And this was in there along with the other ones and they are, they're all listed as red. And, and I went back and looked at the footage from the beginning and it says pink. So I don't know um, if they're mislabeled or what the deal is. Um, unfortunately, I threw out the other one, so I don't have the stock number. Anyway, regardless, it looks cool. So speaking of that, let's have a chat about them. And both of these bowls are for sale. Uh, this is our beautiful black walnut. And with our very red <laughs> inlay of pink coral. Uh, really nice bowl. It's almost 12 inches across by five and a half high, I believe. Only a couple little spots where some critters were. Uh, other than that, the bowl is pretty much flawless. There's the very bottom. And I just put wood bowl finish on the very bottom of these. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna get a couple more coats and then it'll be ready to go. Uh, the finish itself, is silky smooth. I actually almost dropped a couple of these bowls. So, you know, it, it's um, it's really, really nice that way. Feels nice uh, when you're using that like a friction polish. And, and keep in mind, folks, that this is not really, this this finish is not meant to be used in this way. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm reasonably happy with it. You know, I, I, after the first coat went on, I was a little concerned, but you know, that's probably more than enough shine for most people. So, you know, 
I'm, I'm relatively happy with it. I can't speak about the durability of it, but when I was buffing it with the white diamond, I wasn't removing much finish. And that tells me that it's actually pretty hard and should be pretty durable. Um, so anyway, that's the black walnut. It's actually 260 if you're curious. Here's our spalted maple one that's got, and this one's actually even smoother than the, than the black walnut. And it's got a lot of stuff going on with it too. It's got some spalting here. And of course, here's our bird's eye. And there's the pinkish red coral. <laughs> and uh, I, I do know for a fact that when you use resin as the binding agent instead of CA glue that you will typically get a deeper colored inlay. So that may be what's going on here. Uh, the benefits of using the resin in the pressure pot is that there are no, I did not have to fill either one of these. They were perfect. Once they were cut back and sanded, there is absolutely no filling to do with them. So that's a real bonus as well. Uh, here's the very bottom. And it's a beautiful bowl. Uh, I'll let this one go for 220 And of course, those are in Canadian prices. Um, as far as the, the fractal burnt bowls, what I will do uh, to hopefully make it easier for, for, for people is I'll list the ones that sell in the first comment, um, you know, in the, in the comment section. That way, if you if you want it, one of the bowls, you can go there and say, oh no, it's still available. Then shoot me an email, spragwoodturning at gmail.com. And then, you know, as they sell, I will list them there so you're not wasting your time. Um, overall, you know, it. I'm gonna say that it performed better than I anticipated, really. After the first coat, I was like, eh, I don't know if this is gonna work. But you know, that that's probably, more than enough shine for most people. For me, uh, being a shiny finish guy, I mean, I've, I've worked with, with general finishes, solid bowl finish for many, many years. And before that, Danish oil, Watco Danish oil. And you know, I could get really super high shiny finishes with those finishes. Um, and you know, that's good and bad. Like it just depends on who you are. A lot of people just like a straight out matte finish. And for that to be uh, classified as a satin finish, that's probably higher gloss than satin as far as I'm concerned. That's, that's probably a semi-gloss. Anyway, let me know in the description down below, or sorry, in the comments down below what you think about this week's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, and if you can share it with your friends, that would be absolutely awesome. I'd really appreciate it. And of course, that thumbs up certainly helps too. Uh, don't forget about our sponsors in the description down below. Designer Epoxy, Sandpaper.ca, Starbond Adhesives, and Hunter Tool Systems. All your discount codes are in the description down below. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do next week. Um, I think possibly maybe a bowl set, but I'm not 100% I'm not sure. So anyway, whatever it is, hopefully it's cool, so come on back. Well, that's it. Till next week, take care, stay safe, don't forget that bell, and get some easy do and try it yourself. See you next week.